What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here today with the review for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, bitch. We're finally back with Love and Hip Hop, you guys. I have missed having Love and Hip Hop on my Monday nights. So, yeah, we back, you guys, with a whole brand new season. This is season 10 of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. This is episode number one, and the episode was titled The New Normal, you guys. I don't know how new, no I don't know how new and how normal this is. But, hey, we're definitely going to talk about it. So, before we actually get into the review, you guys, if you guys are watching this video or any of the other videos on the channel and you're not already subscribed to the channel, then do me a solid favor. Stop checking me out on a date and subscribe to the channel. So, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell button so you guys are notified when I drop anything else. Share the video. And with that out of the way, without further ado, you guys, let's go ahead and talk about Love and Hip Hop ATL. Now, I will say it looks like we're missing some cast members from Love and Hip Hop. You know, there's no Tokyo. I know that Tokyo is not returning this season. I don't know if Mimi is returning this season. I know Birdie Missy Red is returning this season. No Stevie J. No, um, no Akbar V. No, I don't know. I have to look at it. But I, and the interesting thing was, was Carly was not in the opening credits. Rashida and oh god we'll talk about them let's get into the video shall we all right you guys so yeah like I was just saying about the show you know um some of the old cast members are not returning I do know that Love and Hip Hop Miami has been filming because I saw Amara La Negra she's doing her green screen and the one thing I will say is I love their new I love how their green screens are so this season as opposed to seasons past, because you know, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Love and Hip Hop in general, you know, they green screens, they stand up in front of the green screens and they give us all this, especially Miss Nikki Baby, you know, when she does her, when Miss Nikki Baby talks, she talks with her hands. Everyone talks with their hands, I talk with my hands. But I love that they're sitting down, it makes me miss my green screen so much, I'm ready to go back home. It makes me miss my green screen. It's raining and the sun is out. That's interesting. But, you know, like I said, I love the green screen. The new intro, I was not expecting that. I was, you, you know, how you get it. Doom, 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 This is the life. This is the life. This is the life. This is the life. This, it ain't nothing like hip hop music. I was waiting for that. I was like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. New intro. Okay, Mona, I see you. And then we added two new cast members. Well, two cast members from another city. Put that, put it that way. I was like, okay, we're gonna talk about that cast member that I'm, I just rolled my eyes at. So yeah, let's talk about. Let's go ahead and talk about her. Yandy and Mendeecees, right? So Yandy and Mendeecees have officially relocated down to Atlanta. She is a Georgia peach, right? So Yandy's talking about the fact that you know she's in Atlanta because you know she can be close to her to her dad, her sister, her family. And Mendeecee is talking about he's, you know, happy to be in Atlanta because, you know, he's away from New York and, uh, you know, his, his kids don't have to, you know, deal with the things that he went through in his, you know, when he was coming up. So I'm like, okay, I guess y'all still chasing the bag. Y'all knew that, yeah, I mean, at that point, it was like, you know, New York is not filming because New York is still closed. You know, New York is not open, open. So let's hightail it down to New York, to a ATL, where they wide ass open. And let's get this check. I don't know how I'm feeling about Yandy being on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. I can barely stomach Yandy on Love and Hip Hop New York. So we're going to see how it goes with Yandy. So Yandy also lets us know that, you know, she's going down to Kentucky because it was the one year anniversary of Breonna Taylor's murder, which that was back in March, right? So they've been filming that long. I, now, see, I just realized. They've been filming for they filmed for a while. When you think about it, Brianna Taylor's murder, you know, the year anniversary, and they, I think they're still currently filming, because the trailer that I saw, the trailer that I saw, it looked like, especially with Eric and Safari, that stuff with Eric and Safari in the trailer looked very recent. So I don't know, when, I don't know when they're, I don't know when they stopped filming, but suffice it to say, she's going down to Kentucky. Her dad is, you know, her dad and her family are worried about her going down to Kentucky, which I understand that. You know, especially what happened to she, Portia, and Tamika, them, the last time they were down there with Until Freedom. Remember, they got arrested when they went to 
Daniel Cameron's house. And I mean, they were just protesting. But then you got those assholes that went to the Capitol on January 6th and they were able to walk out free and get arrested afterwards. White privilege. Keep it in mind. So Yandy says that, you know, she's going to go down to um, to Jock's radio station so that way she can get the word out about what Until Freedom is doing. So what they're going to, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. So um, Until Freedom, what they're going to be doing is when they go down to, um, when they go down to Kentucky, um, they're going to do a rally, right? So like I said, Yandy, she's going to the radio station. So she's at the radio station with Jock, right? And, you know, she's talking about how she passed up Jock's club and there was a lot of cars out there. Once again, Yandy, it's Atlanta. Atlanta was wide ass open. Now, here's the thing that I have a question about. So, I'm I'm wondering. Okay, I think I know the timeline. Because I'm about to ask, when did Yandy and Mendeecees move to Atlanta? And when did they film the family reunion? But I think the family reunion was filmed late last, late, late part of 2020. If I'm not mistaken, it was a later part of 2020 when um, the family reunion was filmed. So I guess they must have moved to Atlanta earlier this year. Okay, it is what it is. Like I said, Yandy gonna chase that check. I I can't hate. I don't. I can't hate on her hustle. She's gonna chase a bag. She's gonna chase a bag. So, you know, um, Jock asked Yandy, you know, like where did this transition from her? What you know, what she's doing come from? And she says, you know, she initially didn't know, you know, um, where her voice was, and you know, if she would even fit in with this, you know, whole thing. But she says that Tamika, you know, sat down, talked with her, and made Yandy feel comfortable. So I'm cool with that. Um, so yeah, that's it for Yandy and Mendeecees. Let's move on. Okay, next up, let's talk about Kirk and Rashida. I got the biggest eye roll for Kirk and Rashida. We all know how Kirk and Rashida operate. Kirk and Rashida will do anything to, you know, make a buck with selling out their marriage, right? First, it was a hot tub situation in season two, or was that season three? I don't forgot what season that was. I think it was season two. Then Rashida got pregnant. Kirk was talking about, well, you know what rappers are known for, so we need to get a DNA test. Nigga, it's your baby. Then we had the whole Jasmine storyline that lasted for, what, two seasons? Good God of hell. Jesus Christ. So, then Rashida and Kirk, you know, they went on couples counseling. I didn't watch that show. Didn't watch it because I was like, here we go with Kirk and Rashida. And we got, see, couples counseling or whatever that show called was called VH1's Couples, Ret- couples Retreat. That's what it was. That show, I side-eyed it from the beginning when I saw the cast of Couples Retreat. I had the biggest side-eye for it because you got Ray and Prinky who set out their marriage as well. Speaking of Ray and Prinky, Ray and Prinky are in Miami. So I believe Ray and Prinky are going to be on the current, this new season of Love and Hip Hop Miami. I believe Ray and Princess is going to be on, I believe, I think I read that Love and Hip Hop Miami is adding Ray J and Princess. That'll be interesting to see. And I mean, I guess they have a built in connection with, you know, people from Miami, Trick and Trina, Trick and Trina more specifically, because Trick, Trina, and Joy. But yeah, um, um, what was I at? Rashida and Kirk. Oh, couples retreat. Yeah, when I saw Ray and Prinky, when I saw Rashida and Kirk, when I saw who else was on the couples retreat? Delicious and her husband. I couldn't understand for the life of me why Delicious and her husband was on that show. We y'all had only I've only been married at this point. Actually, y'all just coming up on a year. Y'all coming up on y'all year anniversary because y'all got married in July, June or July of 2020. So I didn't understand what they needed help with. Then you had Rada, is that her name? Rada and um 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 Michael Blackson. Babe, I don't know, I don't understand what anybody sees in Michael Blackson, but that's neither here nor there. So yeah, couples are trails like Kirk and Rashida need a dollar. I mean you guys remember in the season finale of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta season nine. How we gonna live? Like how we gonna pay our bills? Nigga, the same way the rest of us did work so when we see kirk and rashida kirk and rashida they are in bed right they're pretending like they're about to have sex i'm like with a whole motherfucking camera crew in front of y'all y'all finna have sex okay rashida okay kirk 
I see you. Then the baby car comes knocking on the door. You know, give us a few minutes, Kirk. You'll give me about four minutes. Four minutes? Okay, Kirk, whatever. So then they also got a text message from their son, Kai, about Frost Bistro. I'm like, this is the fakest storyline in the... This is fake as hell. But you know what? If Kirk and Rashida in a good space this season, I will take it. I will take it. I will take it. I will take it if Kirk and Rashida in a good space this season. I will literally take that. Because Kirk and Rashida, like I said, for the last... For the whole time that they've been on this show. The only season that Kirk and Rashida had a good season was season one. That was the only good season that Kirk and Rashida have had in their 10 years. Ten, is, it ten, is it actually 10 years or is it just 10 seasons? How many years they've been on this damn show? In their 10 seasons on this show... This is the first time Kirk and Rashida have had. Actually, I think this is. I think this might actually be the tenth year. Because last season, last year we were supposed to get seasons. No, I don't. Hell, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, suffice it to say, right now it looks like Kirk and and as they as everyone calls her Rashida, more specifically, Mimi calls her Rashida. But yeah, Kirk and Rashida they're in a good space. Let's move on from those two. I'm tired of talking about them already. All right, guys, next up, let's talk about our girl, Sierra. So, y'all remember, actually, on the blog, Sierra and, you know, BK, or as she calls him, Romel, they got engaged. You know, she talked, you know, when you listen to um, Sierra talk, she kind of sounds like Tisha from Love and Marriage Huntsville, just a little bit. So, Sierra is going to get the ring of praise that BK got her, right? Now, mind you, Sierra is the, they got engaged, right? Sierra said it to us that a week later, she called off the engagement, but you wanted to get this man's ring of praise. Girl, if he took you to court, you would owe him some money, especially with what they said, allegedly, that ring was valued at. Like, you do realize, Judge Judy will tell you this all the time, if you broke off the engagement, then you give the, if the woman breaks off the engagement, she gives the ring back to the man. If the man breaks it off, then you keep the ring. But in this situation, Sierra... You broke off the engagement, so you owe that man his ring back. So, you know, Sierra says that, you know, when it came down to BK, it just didn't feel authentic, and she just didn't feel like he was the one for her. Girl, we had told you that a long time ago, but okay. Beijing BK. Beijing, you know, I was, I was about, I'm about to talk about his beard, and I had to look at mine, but at least my beard is real. My beard is real. So, she said she fell out of love with him a long time ago, and it was bitch after bitch after bitch. Her words, not mine. So then she says, you know, well, I feel like I owe him a conversation, you know, because we were together one minute and then a week later I broke up with him. But, um, you know, and then we find out that Sierra, she got a new man and his name is, um, what is her new man's name? Eric. Why did I type Erica? And, you know, her and Eric, they went to Dubai together. And we saw the pictures of her and Eric in Dubai. So then the guy comes out and tells her, you know, the ring is going to be is valued at $60,000. I'm like, yeah, right. Okay. Allegedly. So then, you know, Sierra's like, well, we're going to get this watch. We're going to get that. I might bring my mama back down here, too. So then we see Sierra. So she goes to meet up with BK. Back to Sierra in that scene. With, and she was in the, um, in the, um, in the, in the, in the, in the jewelry store. The wig. Why was the wig situated over here in the part? I couldn't. I couldn't stop looking at that damn wig. I was like, Sierra, you have, since you've been on this show, your wigs have never like looked that. I mean, has Sierra had a bad look? Ha, has Sierra ever had a bad wig? I don't think so. Like, I can't for the life of me remember Sierra having a bad wig. What's up? It's your girl Sierra from the Glam Shop. Remember the season she came on. Talking to us like we knew who she was. Like, I was just looking at Sierra's wig. I'm like, girl, Sierra, that ain't the look. So then when she went to meet with BK, I'm like, girl, why do you have your titties out? I was confused why Sierra had her titties out when she went to go see BK. So, you know, I, and in my notes it says, I'm trying to figure out why is she dressed the way she is. So as soon as she walked in, her and Rom Romel, they start arguing and, Rome and BK started bringing up her new dude. I'm like, why? Did I was actually with Sierra. Like, why do you care about my new dude? Like, if you were talking to another girl, I'm not going to bring, I wouldn't bring her up because I don't what? Give a damn. 
So they just argue back and forth and nothing got, nothing got solved, nothing got fixed, nothing happened with Sierra, Sierra and BK. That beard is a mess. BK, I just really want you to just shave that shit because it's really like, I mean, look at my beard. Although it's a shadow right about now, but you can, you can go back and look at some of my other videos when my beard is thick. My beard is not, I mean, my beard is black, but it ain't that damn, it's not jet black. Like, why do y'all, um, never mind, let's move on. All right, you guys, so next up, let's talk about our new cast member. Her name is Young Baby Tate. So, never heard of her. Um, but, you know, she looks, I mean, honestly, from what we saw of Young Baby Tate, I actually have a lot of, I have high hope for Young Baby Tate. When it comes to loving hip-hop, I don't necessarily know. Like, I wish, you know, with Love and Hip-Hop, they do churn out some stars, I mean, the biggest name we know from Love and Hip Hop is Cardi B. Omarion was able to, you know, reinvent his career on Love and Hip Hop, but now it looks like he's once again dead ish. Um, K. Michelle, you know, she was able to build her career from Love and Hip Hop, but now she's blackballed. Because you know what? I haven't heard of K. Michelle record on the radio in a, in a minute. Um, then, you know. We also have, um, who else? Who else we got? Amara. Like, Amara LeNegra from Love & Hip Hop Miami. Amara hasn't done much with her career. I mean, she does She does put out music, but I think it's her team. So, I hope Young Baby Tate, with this show, I hope she's able, because she's, we heard her music, and she's very talented. Now, she tells us, you know, she has a big friend group because she is an only child. And then she says her mom, her mom is a Grammy Award winner. She has two Grammys, so she wants to get four. And she says her mom is Dion Ferris. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know who Dion Ferris is. So, you guys can definitely fill me in on who Dion Ferris is. Because I don't necessarily know who she is. But she says that her mom didn't initially support her career. And she just wanted her, she wanted her to go to college. But that wasn't for her. And, and I will say that, you know, college is not for everyone. Honestly, I would say go to a trade school. So then we later see young baby Tate as she's getting ready to head to the studio. She's doing a video for a song that will be headlining, she said, 2021 for South by Southwest, which is held in Austin every year. And they were playing on song. I'm like, okay, young baby Tate, you got you got something there, girl. Like, I'm feeling this. Like, I am really feeling young baby Tate. And like I said, I really hope and wish for the best with young baby Tate. But that's it for young baby Tate. And we're going to move on, move on over to the BS. All right, you guys, next up, let's talk about Erica, Safari, and Scrappy, and the Bambi, and her hoofs, as Mama D once said. So, the episode we saw, um, we began, we didn't begin the episode, actually. Uh, where was I at? Where's that shit at? Lord, I should have had this ready. So, Bambi and Scrappy, right? Now, here's the interesting thing with Bambi and Scrappy. You guys remember, when we left off with Bambi and Scrappy and couple, not couples, retreat, in the family reunion, they left things on a good note. Now, after the family reunion, actually, I think that was during the family, re when the family reunion was airing, that they revealed that Bambi was pregnant with their latest baby, which I, for the life of me, did not know that Bambi and Scrappy had three kids. I thought it was just Breland and this new baby. When did they have another one? I didn't know that, but hey, okay. Congratulations on three. I thought it was just two. So we see Bambi, she has C, C, Era, and Erica over there, right? So Erica's talking about the fact that her child is Shaz's husband. She feels like he abandons her. Girl, he does. Let's not forget the stunts and shows he pulls on social media. And we're, we're definitely going to talk about that in just a little bit, right? So um, she's talking about how marriage is hard. No shit, Sherlock. I don't think anyone that's been married any length of time is going to tell you that, oh, marriage is easy. Marriages have their ebbs and, their ebbs and flows, right? They have, their, they have their high moments, they have their low moments, like, but it's up to you and your significant, you, you, your husband, your wife, you guys, it's up to you guys to work things out and, you know, withstand the test of time. That's what, you know, entails a marriage. So, um, Bambi says that, you know, she and Scrappy, they're having issues and the issues with Bambi and Scrappy is, I think that Scrappy just wants Bambi to basically wait on him hand and foot. 
because Bambi needs to take a take a break, you know, take it easy with this pregnancy. But she's still she's not supposed to be heavy lifting. But Scrappy still has her doing stuff like Scrappy. Come on, grow up, my brother. And y'all know I like me some Scrappy. But Scrappy, let's grow up. So Erica, so Sierra's talking to them, you know, um, about uh, well, you know, I look at you, I call you guys my sisters, and they my brothers. And Eric and, and um Bam was like, oh, fuck that. If we not fucking with them, you don't fuck with them. So Sierra says, well, you know, Erica, when it comes to you and Safari, I feel like y'all just need to stop posting stuff on social media. I 100% agree. But I'm not going to sit here and put it all on Erica. It's on Safari. Because Safari is the one that actually started that shit. We're talking about marriage was the biggest mistake he ever made. Like, if you felt that way, why didn't you sit down and have... Why did you feel the need to put it on social media is the number one question. Why did you feel the need to put that on social media? Why not go and sit down and have a conversation with your wife at that point? Instead of going to social media, go talk to your wife. Be like, hey, baby, you know, I'm feeling this type of way about our marriage. You know, either we need to go see a counselor or we need to get a divorce. One of the two. Not make another baby. Like... The in, the interesting thing with Safari is I watched that show that they went on a few a few years ago when they when they first met it was that um, Scream show, it was that Halloween show where it was him, her, Nikki baby, um, Sky from Black Ink Crew, um, uh, a contestant from RuPaul's Drag Race, and Tiffany New York Pollard, and I, I think that was I think that was it, but you got you pursued her on that show. Now you knew who we you knew who Erica Mena was and we know who Erica Mena is. We've been watching Erica Mena for years on Love and Hip Hop New York. We know how reckless Erica Mena's mouth is. You can't handle my mouth, motherfucker. Peter Guns. I mean, we saw how Erica is. And I was looking at it, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be an interesting relationship between Erica and Safari. I'm like, I don't see it lasting. Then when they got engaged, I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, I don't see them going down the aisle. They made it down the aisle. I'm like, oh. They got married. I'm like, okay, maybe this will work. I'm like, but how? Like I said, Erica. Erica is a hothead. We know how Erica is. Safari is a clown. I don't... I just I just saw those two... I never saw those two meshing. I saw those two having nothing but friction between them. And from what we see, it looks like it's friction. But also when it comes to Erica and Safari, I do believe that part of this is storyline. Now, I do know that just yesterday, Erica was posting about... um. Um, Kaylin, who is is it Joe's ex girlfriend? Oh yeah, the girl that was on that one season with Joe. Yep, his ex girlfriend. She said that they were doing something. I don't care. Now I, I do feel some type of way about the fact that Safari. I mean, I know Safari is out working, but damn, your wife just had your son and he's premature and he's in the hospital. Get your money and go back to your your wife and your son. So, Scrappy, right? Him and Safari, they've become cool, right? They're working out. Scrappy look really good. Scrappy's lost some weight. I'm like, okay, Scrappy, Scrappy's lost some weight since the family reunion, for sure. So, Safari is talking about him and Erica. They're having some issues. And he says he's Erica's having issues with him working out. Um, As much as I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of Erica, I'm on Erica's side in this situation. Of course, I'm going to feel some type of way about you going to work out. You're leaving the house or even if you leaving even if you're not leaving if we got a gym in the house you're taking time away to yourself whereas i'm with our kid their their daughter so erica doesn't have the luxury or the leisure time to get the hell away but you do and he's like you know i wish somebody had told me that babies were like such hard work like dude that's what it, i mean when you, when you become a parent your life starts to center around that child like, I don't get that. So then, you know, um, but listening to Safari talk, he's very selfish. You know, on top of him being a big ass kid, he's very fucking selfish. He's talking about how he's, you know, they live in a seven, uh, they seven bedroom house, but he's sleeping in the studio. Is that by choice? Because if you said you got seven bedrooms, so Erica's sleeping in one bedroom, why don't you go sleep in another bedroom? Because it's just you, Erica, her oldest son, King, and y'all's baby. So, why are you sleeping in the studio? You just choosing to sleep in the studio. 
Sanini says it's a lot of fussing, cussing, and throwing shit. Safari, I don't blame Erica. I would be fussing at you. I would be cussing at you. And I would be throwing whatever I could find at you. Because like I said, you're a whole ass child. So then um, Safari, like I said, so he's talking to Erica. So he's, so Safari had a little bit of an issue because he's, he found their wedding photos outside by the trash can. Production set that up. So um, like I said, they sleep in separate rooms. And they're only one year into marriage. Like I said, once again, Safari is a big ass what? A big ass child. So Safari says that Erica has changed since marriage. Well, I would imagine so. She got married, and then not long after that, she got pregnant. So I'm pretty certain she's gonna change after all of that. But she feels like he neglects her and he's not into her. I mean, he he's into you some way. Maybe it's just a vagina. Because he's got, he's, he definitely got you pregnant. Here's the thing that I noticed in this scene where they're talking in the kitchen. Erica is clearly pregnant. She looks like she's about three or four months pregnant at this point. But when she was with Bambi and Erica, I mean Bambi and um, Sierra, I don't think she was pregnant. So the editing was off in this episode because when she was with Bambi and um, and um, Sierra, she was drinking wine and she didn't look pregnant. But in this scene, she was clearly pregnant. Um. Honestly, in this whole entire scene, I was actually on Erica's side because Safari tries to down, he, he was really trying to downplay that whole situation on um, Twitter. He was trying to downplay that. And if I was Eric, I would have hauled off and slapped the shit out of his ass. Period. Point blank. But that's it, you guys. That's the first episode. I enjoyed this episode. I, eh, can I say I enjoyed it? It didn't give me normal love and hip hop first episode because, you know, a typical love and hip hop first episode, we get with the drama immediately. This season, we di we didn't. So, I don't know if they're going with a new approach or what. But, I mean, we're going to be here for, the you know, as Roxanne says, shout out to my sister, Ross. We're going to be here for all the fool of fuck coon niggatry with Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Especially when it comes to that bird, Carly Red. But, that's it, you guys. Be sure to like this video. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button. So, you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. And, share this video. On to the next one, you guys. Stay safe out there. Please take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands, wear your mask or not, whichever one you guys decide to do. Be safe in doing so. Socially distance, be blessed, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye, guys.